hello guys if if i'm dreaming somebody please wake me up because once it was a dream and now i'm living my dream so guys today i want to let you know about the kind of questions which you going to face the kind of questions they're gonna ask you at the american embassy the consular the consular is gonna ask you first of all before first of all before telling you the quest kind of questions you're gonna meet at the interview uh what is the quality of a person you have to be when you you're going to the interview or when you're at the interview itself so guys there's one thing you always have to do you always have to be true to yourself don't lie be true to yourself stick with whatever you feel in in your ds260 because they will always question you according to what you feel in in your ds260 so uh after that always you have to be precise and clear and always let your eyes look into the consular's eyes because this one uh, uh, makes the person feel like you understand what you're talking about and you're not lying. So what are the questions? Uh, the first number one question is like having any other interview, the consular at the American Embassy diversity visa interview at the consulate this person will ask you what's your name what's the what's your date of birth yeah because he needs to know if you are the same person who is standing in front of him you're the same person uh the same person in the document because he already has your document so he wants to know are you the same person in the document so guys you don't need to lie you don't need to be like uh my names are this and this so i have another name if you didn't include it if if you included it like you have another object of support to support your names it's already there just mention your names who are you mention your names Mention the surname, the first name, and the middle name. Mention all of them. So, uh, after that, the number one question, as I've said, they will ask is your name, how old are you, which year did you graduate from school? Which year did you graduate from school? Guys, you have to know this. You have to keep it in the mind before going to your interview as in in the early morning you in even before that you can try to go through your documents like which year did i go to high school which year did i finish my high school you get you understand what i'm talking about which year was i born you have to know this just try to memorize about your wife about your kids if you are having them with you so try to know this kind of dates because that's what they are gonna ask then they will ask are you married man stick to the truth if the truth is you're married say you're married because by truth i mean what you wrote in your ds260 if you wrote you're married stick to the truth and i believe by now you already know that they have your supporting documents because always uh, when you reach the embassy you go through the all gates you enter there are always three counters you will first take your supporting documents they will receive them then they will ask you to pay now when you are on the final counter the consular he has already your document so you're meeting the consular and whatever you say it has to correspond with whatever is in your document so when they ask you are you married 
I believe there will be, if you're married, there will be a marriage certificate. If you're not, he will know that you're single. Do you have any kids? He will ask, do you have any kids? He already has documents. He has birth certificate of your kids. If, if you're taking them with you to America, if you're going with them, if you said you'd not go with them, he knows he, you can carry the documents and they will ask you to produce them at the document counter. But still, if you're not taking them, they will ask you about the documents, maybe, and the photos, if you have kids. But if you have them right there, they will ask, do you have kids? Yes, you say, yes. It doesn't mean they're playing with you. You have kids, yes, you have them there. Then you say, yes, I have kids. How many kids? Who are they? You have to know your kids. You have to produce the, the supporting documents, yes. Like birth certificates, you have, they have to have your names and your wife's name. If they are not yours, like they are your stepkids, still, they have to have a legal document, supporting document, birth certificate, if, if they are your stepkids. Because stepkids are allowed, biological kids are allowed. Your spouse's kids, that is the step kids, they are allowed. So after that, they can ask you, what do you do for a living? And you have to know this. What do you do for a living? Be straightforward. Say, I'm a doctor. Be confident. Say, I'm uh, a teacher. Yes, they, they have the supporting document. They will see if you're a teacher and you have your uh, college, like you went and studied that teaching course, they have those kind of documents, the one you produced in the document counter, they will have it. So after that, they can ask, um, uh, who is your host? Who is your host? You have to know your host. And you have to, to know further information about your host because they might ask, what does your host do for a living? Where does your host stay? So when you're going to America, are you going to stay with your host? You have to know this kind of information, guys. Okay, and what, what, what's the name of your host? Which state? Where does your host live? What does he do? Is your host married? They can ask this kind of question. Does he have kids? How many kids? If you, for instance, you say, my host is my brother, they, they know that if, he, if the host is your brother, you have to know more information about that person. If he's not your brother, like my host is, is a friend, a family friend, they will know that, okay, he's a family friend, maybe you don't know much about him, he's a family friend, maybe your mom or dad, linked you to that person and is gonna help you when you reach america that means you know little about this person still you might know something like does he have family you have, you have to know this kind of information where does he live you don't say my mother is the one who knows no that is not good for your that's not a good image you have to know where you're going to whom are you going to stay with you have to know the host you have to know what that he does this kind of questions and still the host has to give you the supporting document if he's your sponsor at the same time they have this if you produce them at the document counter so whatever you say is what they have there inside they are looking at it and now they might ask uh, other questions like uh, your relationship between you and your host when did the host go to america Oh, when did you last saw the host? If, for instance, you say the host is my brother. If, when did you last see your brother? Like, when did he come back to your country? When did he visit your country? Uganda, Kenya, Ghana, Tanzania, Liberia, Egypt. When did your host ever visited you? When did you last meet? So if you have photos with your host, like, is my brother so you, if you have photos you produce these photos they will say they will see the photo and they will know that ah so this is the person and remember when it comes to host and your sponsor
So, when you look at the list of questions I've gone through, uh, beside going to the next question, let me take you back. So, we talked about questions like, what's your name? How old are you? Which year did you graduate from high school? How are you married? Any children? What do you do for a living? Who is your host? What is the name of your host? Which state? Where does your host live? What does he do for a living? Your relationship with the host. When did, you, when did your host go to America? Another thing, when did you last see your host? Why do you want to go to America? That is more questions. Why do you want to go to America? Man, don't let it scare you. Why do you want to go to America? Yes, you already have an intent of going to America because you participating in the DV lottery they, it's already showing that you are, want to go to America and live there. So you have to say live, work, and study because that's what we do in America. We live, we work, and we study. That is the best answer. You cannot give a negative answer like you want to go and start smuggling. Because mere by saying you want to study, that means America is going to benefit you by giving you an uh, environment to study. Then to live, you're going to gain from America and you're going to give back. Because when you live here, you pay taxes, you spend money. So after that, when you say leave, work, and study. So when you work, you're giving back to America. You're giving them a service. Still, however much you're benefiting from your work, you're benefiting, but still you're giving them a service. You're in the health sector. You're saving lives. You're in the transport sector. You're moving people from one place to another. You're making America a better place for others to live in. So guys, you have to know that live, work, and study. Whatever. If you say I'm going to study, it will lead you to work and it will lead you to live. So this is the, when you combine it all, live, work, and study is the best answer. So after that, there is a few questions, then we wind up. Uh, questions like, uh, what, have you ever traveled outside your country? Questions like, have you ever been on the other side of law? Have you tra ever traveled outside your country? Yes. There should be evidence. There should be a document showing that you have ever lived outside your country. And, uh, and what did you do there? They will ask you, for how long did you live outside your country? And what did you do there? So these kind of questions are very good. So they might ask, have you ever been on the other side of law? On the other side of law? Yes. No. On the, but if they ask you, have you ever been on the other side of law? As in, on the other side of law, it means on the, uh, have you ever committed a crime? Don't say yes. You have to be on the law every time. You have to be on the law. You have to abide by the law. So guys, Thanks for staying here, guys. I'm asking you guys to go ahead becoming members on my channel. Join my channel. Become members. Support my channel. Yes, there is a certain fee they will deduct you, but still you're supporting me. The fact that you're here means you want to support me and you want to see my channel growing. So we grow by members. So guys, support me. It's a little bit of money there they will deduct from you, but please support my channel. Let us grow. We can bring more more videos about America, about cities, about whatever, if there is members who are supporting this. So you just go on, on my channel. You can see there is a join. When you press join, you, you go subscribe first of all, then you press join to become members then you continue. It is safe if you want to use credit cards, debit cards, whatever, visa cards, it is so safe. 
YouTube is genuine. Thank you guys for supporting me and thank you for being here. I love you all. <laughs> yeah, today I want to encourage you guys. If you want to achieve it, then you have to go for it. It doesn't mean that it will take a short time to achieve, but you just have to stay on the right track. Consistence matters a lot. It could be next year. Try to apply each and every year so you can get it one day. <laughs>